Hello, so welcome back to this machine learning series. Today we're going to be talking about kernels. So let's just jump into this then. So, so far what we've been talking about is if our data is separatable in a linear fashion. Now, we've talked about concepts like uh, support vector machines that being, um, being able to separate data in just your two-dimensional um, make two dimension in two dimensions so that being your x and your y's now in the real world coming across real world problems that's not always going to be the case you might get points that are somewhat intermixed so for example plus here plus here a plus here a plus here and then a minus here minus here minus here minus here, minus, here, minus here. right there's no easy way to kind of divide this data with a straight line without having conflicts so one solution to this is to introduce a third dimension so something like this. So by introducing a third dimension, you can have your data points. Not always, but in most cases, you could have your data points, the x being at the front, and then the minuses being somewhere at the back. Right? And then what you can do is introduce a hyperplane, so a line stretched in the three dimensional in three dimensions uh, becomes a hyperplane, separating out your data. Right? So you can think of this as being a hyperplane. So these x's are at the front and the minuses are behind the hyperplane. Now, that's cool, but it does come up it does come with its consequences because if you've managed to run the code I showed you in the in the previous three videos, um, if you even manage to write it up and, and run it, it, you will see it takes a long time to process. Like the processing time is, is long. So introducing another dimension just increases the time by a factor of that much. So the problem increases to the power of three, right? Because we're exploring x, y, and z dimensions. So a solution to that is to use something called kernels. So let's just talk about some of the maths behind it and then it'll make more sense what kernels actually do. But essentially kernels skips you having to do the transformation to those vectors to put them into the third dimensional space. So Okay, so we have here our, our original dis decision rule for support vector machines. Now we know that it's the vector w times by the vector u plus b is bigger than or equal to zero. Now when we did a differentiation on this with respect to vector w, so something like um, over that, yeah, when we did that, we it's running out of space. When we did that, we um, <clears throat> made it so it looked like uh, vector w was um, i, uh, x i, y i, and then vector x i. We did. We managed to solve w, or at least differentiate it, so it looked like this. So if we plug this back into our into our original decision rule, you would have something that looks like this. Right? And here again we have a dot product rule. And in the original Lorange equation that we managed to solve into its core parts, we had the dot product rule again appear. And now we we, we told we said that in, in the previous those those three three tutorials, we were trying to find the maximum value. So the optimal value of how to place our lines. But in this case, because we are going to the third dimension, where to place our hyperplanes. So we know that it predominantly rests on these dot product rules. The kernel here is a, is the core basis of the dot product, that, that its inner workings is just a dot product rule. And we can use the kernel here to solve the dot product parts here. So in this case, because we're using u, but you can replace that u with a vector j. You can replace that with x vector j, yeah. So the kernel would be equal to so the kernel of x i and the kernel of uh, j i, so those two as a function, um, would be equal to the um, the transformation of x i vector times by the transformation of x j vector. 
So faith, theta, yeah, theta, that, theta, that. The transformations of that is equal to, to this kernel function. So what this essentially means is the transformations that would need to be applied to these vectors is equivalent to the kernel function. So if we work out the kernel function, there's no need for us to do expensive computation of exploring the third dimension. So let me put that into kind of context of why that is so cool. You don't have to go into the third dimension and work out all the optimal distances and that sort of thing. You just need to know the kernel function. So think about that. You're, 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 you've got this data. You're trying to find the best way to separate this data out. You would think the obvious thing is to go into the third dimension, align the, the plane to the best fitting points, then come out of it, and then you've got the equation there to, to, to the best points. But you don't need to do that. You just apply this special, this special kernel function to it, and you've automatically found the optimal way to place these lines to separate your points out. I just thought that was really cool because it's like magic. Like, you're not actually doing... So some of the special kernel functions that are there are, or that that are known to be, are uh, vector u dot product vector v plus one to the power of n. So that's one of them. That's one special case, and e to the power of minus um, x i minus x j the absolute value of that and then have that divided by um, sigma. So these are the two known kernel functions that the most common ones really. One, one caveat about this kernel function is that uh, this one in particular I think it's called the radial uh, it's RMD I think it's called or RMDR radial distance I forgot the name for it but it was something R RMF RMF or RDF but if you do make um, sigma a small enough value, you will have like a, a kind of curve around your data, so you'll be overfitting your data. So there are some caveats with the kernel function, but this is what has been used in most of support vector machines throughout history, like since it was conceived about in the 1970s and so on, it's been incredibly useful in, in solving these complex machine learning problems. Um, so kernel functions are heavily used. They're used in other concepts as well, but it's especially used in support vector machines. So, yeah. If you want to learn more about it, I'll suggest searching a guy called Vaspnik. He was a Soviet... He was a guy from the Soviet Union who um, really came up with this idea and then emigrated to the USA to kind of... Uh, yeah, he emigrated to the USA and then the concept from there grew after a couple of years um, his work got noticed and it grew from there at first it wasn't like most things but then after a while when people realized his work was pretty useful with number um, classifications like do you know the the famous machine learning problem with classifying numbers like you have a number set one to nine classifying whether something's a one or a two and so on so that's where his uh, his machine learning model became quite popular so yeah, I think that covers this tutorial. Um, I will see you in the next one, and goodbye.